If you're in tanks and make no mistake, you've come to the right place. Just give to Neil the time to straight up blow your mind with a new show of joy in a plank. As many of you are well aware of at this point, Clouded Moon has its own unique lore separate from Warriors now. If you somehow haven't heard of this change, there's plenty of videos and posts about the subject that you can check out in the cards and below the description. It's been discussed enough that I don't want to rehash all the same things over and over because I'm super excited about the contents of this episode, but the TLDR is that we wanted to protect the longevity of the project and once we asked ourselves what we would even do with complete creative freedom, we ended up falling in love with the project even more than before without changing its core identity. Captain Snapdragon has a great video breaking down a lot of the key lore changes that we've made, and the lore stream we did when we decided that we would go this direction is even more in depth. Patrons to Cloud and Moon have also been given a lot of good content via our Discord server and the updates we do every month, so if you're interested, I highly recommend checking those out. So one of the big changes that we've made to our lore of Cloud and Moon is introducing a job system to the colonies. Similar to warriors, our cats live in groups governed by leaders, called captains, and their second in command. These cats still go through a training period, which concludes with a rite of passage to be seen as adults. In warriors, cats of course go from apprentices to the titular warrior. But in Clouded Moon, kittens begin training at a much younger age and enter different stages of training based on their age and grasp of skills. Kittens start training in what is called base training. This starts on average in the colonies around three months old and base training consists of learning their colony's oral history, rules, and traditions, as well as beginning to develop skills that will help them navigate their territory. For example, cats who live in the riverlands need to learn how to swim, so kittens start practicing their swimming skills supervised in shallow and calm waters near River Colony Base. Once base training is complete, kittens graduate to new claws and begin their field training. This training is a lot more similar to what apprentice training looks like in warriors, learning to hunt and fight. And once this training is complete, new claws go through their rite of passage to become rangers. They're now adults in their colony, and they may range the territory more freely. While each cat trains to be a ranger, colonies can train cats in a specific career path that they can choose from once becoming an adult. Some cats use this freedom to not choose a career path and just stay a ranger. But for more ambitious cats, these careers offer specialized training that make them authorities in their colonies. A ranger who wishes to specialize can still participate in ranging, but their first priorities must be to follow their path. These career paths are herbalists, mentors, envoys, and keepers. Today we'll be talking about keepers. Keepers are primarily in charge of the well-being of their colony's base, meaning the structure of walls and tunnels, as well as cleaning out nests and old bone fragments or rotten food, and being the caregivers of the colony's kittens. These homebodies work hard to keep dens clean, make sure the base's defenses are in perfect condition, and teach kittens the basics of everything that they need to know before they leave base and begin training with the mentors in field training. Keepers are the best authorities in their colonies of their culture, traditions, and history. Now that may make you wonder what that means for pregnant cats or the parents of said kittens. Are they treated as keepers even temporarily, like warriors queens? Do parents forfeit their kittens to keepers? How does that work? So cats expecting kittens in the colonies typically talk to the colonies herbalists and keepers to help them prepare for having kittens. Keepers will prepare the parent or parents along with following any advice from their herbalists and keepers will prepare the proper nest for the parent. Once kittens are born, keepers tend to aid the parent as much as they need and when they are ready to resume their duties, keepers will watch over the kittens in their absence. Of course, some parents are keepers, so they will continue as they see fit. And plenty of others who aren't keepers are eager to get back to their normal paths, knowing that the keepers are caring for their little ones. 
Some parents prefer to raise their kittens with less of the keeper's involvement and just want to spend time together with their kittens until they start base training, which is generally acceptable as well. Once kittens reach the age of base training, they begin attending lessons held by keepers. But of course, plenty of their time will still just be spent with their family and the rest of the colony. Keepers' lessons will differ from colony to colony, like my previous example with River Colony. In Marsh Colony, keepers will teach base training kittens the dangers of navigating their territory. The swamps can be quite deadly, Field colony keepers teach all kittens how to identify plants because the territory is so vast that herbalists can't range it all on their own and knowing basic doctoring is important in case herbalists are on the other side of the territory. Field colony keepers also emphasize cooperation and working in groups as cats who range field colony alone are less likely to catch prey and more likely to become prey. In Oak Colony, keepers teach kittens their unique traditions that revolve around climbing trees and balancing on cliffs. While keepers mostly stay in their home base to fulfill these duties, keepers do range from time to time to get out and socialize and sharpen their skills. While ranging, keepers are always on the lookout for supple twigs, long vines or roots, stones, leaves, or even pretty flowers to bring back with them to the base. Some keepers are also good at working with their paws. They can craft simple tools and weave together knots to make walls stronger. In Oak Colony, a skilled keeper can even weave together a pouch for cats to carry things in. Rensong was about to exit the base. Finchflight knew that Rensong would never say anything about it, but she knew Rensong had been overworked this fall as an early chill had taken her by surprise and damaged a lot of Rensong's plants. She'd been spending all day up in the cliff gardens, moving plants back and forth. The herbalist had explained to Finchflight how the plants needed to be moved carefully and how they needed to be replanted in a spot where the sun would shine on them first thing in the morning so that a night chill hopefully wouldn't kill them completely. Finchlight couldn't even begin to understand how Rensong knew how to do all that, but it was important work that the whole colony depended upon. As a keeper, Finchflight wanted to help Rensong in whatever way she could. If keepers weave together den walls to keep their loved ones safe, then herbalists tended to their plants for the same reasons. And as a mother, Finchflight wanted to help her daughter's spirits. Being the only herbalist for all of Oak Colony was tough work, and Finchflight didn't want Rensong to think her work was unappreciated. Finchflight prayed to the spirits in the hopes that one of the new claws would show interest in the career path. Her own little Moon was one in particular that Finchflight had an eye on. During her base training, Moon seemed enamored by the herbalist's den, and out of all the kittens, she had a real knack for balancing on thin ledges. That kind of focus was important up on the cliff gardens. In the meantime, though, Finchflight had been working on the perfect gift to help Rensong with her task. At first, she thought she'd offer to take a few keepers up to the cliff gardens. Then she thought better of it. They might just get in her daughter's way and accidentally trample an important plant. This way, everyone wins, and I don't have to get my paws dirty. She thought proudly as she examined her gift one last time to make sure it was ready. Now hold on, my little bird, Finchflight called out to her daughter. Rensong's ear flicked backward in recognition. A wry smile crossed Rensong's face as she turned back to her which was replaced with a puzzled stare when she saw what Flinchflight was carrying. Mom, what in the Ancient One's forest did you make now? Flinchflight looped the pouch over Rensong's head. She didn't make a fuss. In fact, she seemed amused. After getting the pouch on Rensong and adjusting it to fit her, she looked up into her daughter's eyes. See, isn't that nice? You can put all sorts of things in here. You're always complaining about how heavy all those roots are. Oh, come on, Mom, you fuss too much. I don't need anything to... Nonsense! This will help with your work. I made it especially for you. Rensong rolled her eyes, but Finchflight could tell that Rensong was quite grateful for the gift. Thanks, Mom. She purred and gave her daughter a lick on the cheek as a sign of affection. Rensong started to leave again, and Finchflight called out, Just let me know if it needs any further adjusting when you get back. I can take a look at it tonight when I'm telling stories to the kittens. Sure, I'll let you know. Well-crafted tools by keepers are often passed down from generation to generation if possible. A well-made tool could become a vital part of the colony's everyday life and a part of their history. Like I mentioned before, 
Keepers are in charge of the kittens while everyone else ranges the territory or is otherwise busy. They teach kittens about the ancestors' law, tell them stories about the spirits beyond and their history, but one of their most important jobs is to train kittens in specialized skills that they will need before they're allowed to leave base. In River Colony, a kitten graduates from base to field training by proving that they can easily swim the river that separates their base from the rest of the Riverlands. Rainfall really wants us to take the kitten swimming today, Ashen Creek asked. She made sure her tone was not disapproving, just asking for confirmation, even though she felt her heartbeat quicken at the thought. Blue River's tired eyes locked her in a stare. Ashen Creek lost herself in that gaze. She could never tell what Blue River was thinking. Was my disapproval obvious? She panicked. She froze, only letting a guarded breath out when the gray molly nodded. Yes, she reminded me that her ice claw and I all started swimming at this age, so my kit should be just fine. Blue River spoke in a monotone, not a hint of fear whatsoever. Ashen Creek swallowed back a remark about how if they were her kittens, there's no way she'd let them start swimming at two months old. But her grandkittens were coming soon. In a few months' time, could she gather the courage to tell Rainfall no? Especially if her fellow keepers weren't even on her side? Maybe I'm just being paranoid. She tried to calm herself down. Swimming is fun. And the training shallows here at base are the calmest, safest waters a cat could ask for. After all, her and Blue River were strong swimmers. And these are Blue River's kittens. No way is Blue River going to let them drown. Drown. At that thought, Ashen Creek felt the panic build at the back of her throat again. Disturbing images invaded her thoughts without her permission. She shuddered. We won't let that happen. I brought pine, snow, and umber like you asked. Minogill spoke flatly. The keeper in training was just as tired as the rest of them. With only the three of them, the keepers have been struggling to keep up with their duties. If it wasn't her job to help prepare her parents to have kittens, Ashen Creek didn't think she'd have any time to spend with her own family. I don't wanna, came a cry from Pine, tears of rage already forming. Pine cried about everything. The tabby kitten made a break for Minogill's legs, but Blue River scooped him up quickly and dropped him by her feet. Stay there, Pine. Blue River spoke in the same monotone to her kittens as she spoke to everyone. Pine whimpered, but seemed to be placated by his mother's presence. Umber and Snow went close to the water to sniff the cool surface. Ashen Creek kept a close eye on them, edging closer to the water's edge, just in case. Blue River turned back to Minogill. You can go back to working on the nursery walls, Minogill. We'll take it from here. Yeah, he sighed grumpily. I could really use your help. With Misty Claw having her kittens soon, we really need to get that south wall finished. We'll keep this lesson short, Blue River promised. Ashen Creek had to stop herself from sighing with relief. The sooner this was over with, the better. Blue River continued. But Rainfall wants these three ready for field training as soon as possible. Ashen Creek caught her son tense. At least, she didn't think she imagined it. Minnow Gill blinked slowly, a question hanging on the tip of his tongue. But he was scared to ask it. Blue River didn't need for him to ask. She read his mind and looked down at her kittens. If this goes well, we'll be doing training like this for all kittens moving forward. And I promised her it would go well. She looked back up at them. Understood? Of course. Minogill and Ashen Creek practically spoke in unison. Neither dared look away from Blue River. Ashen Creek tried to quickly ease her fears. We have to make this work. We don't have a choice. A splash made all three keepers turn. Snow had pushed Umber into the water. It was too shallow to be a big concern, but Umber's legs and belly were all wet, and the kitten let out a growl while Snow laughed. These kittens are so young. We should be telling them stories of our history and teaching them the ancestors' law. Ashen Creek wrapped a long tail around herself as Blue River scooped up her kittens and scolded Snow. They don't even know enough to know that while water can be fun, can also be dangerous. Maybe that's why Rainfall is doing this, she reasoned. The younger they learn, then the better off they'll be, right? 
She herself was only a little older than Blue River's kittens when she learned how to swim. What's a few more months mean in the grand scheme of things? Maybe she was just feeling more protective now that she had grand kittens on the way. This will all be for the best, she assured herself. And with Blue River, Minnow Gill, and herself watching over things, she knew that they would do anything to make this work. She stepped out into the shallows to start the kittens' lessons. But her heart dropped again when she looked into their big, innocent eyes. As you can see, keepers have a lot of responsibilities. And it's a job that's not as glamorous as envoys or often as respected as mentors or herbalists. But keepers are the heart of their colony and often have a strong bond with every cat in it. They work closely with every other group in the colony to keep things running smoothly. And while they don't get to be a part of the colony's council, the council will often come to keepers for their input. In Field Colony, keepers aren't just in charge of one base, but three. As Field Colony moves from base to base throughout the year to manage the seasons and natural cycle of prey moving about the territory, keepers in Field Colony have to keep those bases in decent condition year-round so that switching bases can be done with ease. Metal Deep had been doing this for a long time, but it was always a disappointment to everyone when it was time to move from South Base to North Base. Misty Snow had received the signs from the spirits telling them that they would need to move soon. The whole colony would do its part to tidy up the South Base before they left, and that would be that. But the keepers were always busier around this time. Meadow Leap joked with Misty Snow that her body read the signs from the spirits better than she could because her right leg would always start acting up right before the move. Luckily, she had plenty of younger cats to help out. Jagged Stripe and Amber Eyes actually seemed excited about the move this year, but Meadow Leap knew why. Amber Eyes had her kitten, Peach, just a few months ago, and Jagged Stripe was planning on having kittens this spring, so their attention was focused on making the North and East Bases nurseries their best. It was Amber Eye's second litter, and little Peach had put a twinkle in her mother's eye. She no doubt wanted to get Peach into the much safer North Base, even if the journey there would be a tad harrowing. Jagged Stripe was over the moon. Metal Leap tried not to give him a pity smile whenever he talked about how Fernface had actually said she wanted to have kittens with him. That's none of your business, Meadow Leap, she told herself. She was happy that Jagged Stripe was happy, at least. Meadow Leap couldn't blame them for being excited. She was excited about her litter coming soon as well. This would be her last one. Mundos and her had only been together for a few years now, and they both wanted kittens, but they were getting on in years. Their first litter, Clay and Thrush, were halfway along in their new claw training and would no doubt finish by the end of spring. Mundnose and Meadow Leap proudly watched them grow up, and Meadow Leap couldn't have been happier to know that after their base training with her, Mundnose could continue having a watchful eye over them as a mentor during their field training. But two kittens just wasn't enough. Meadow Leap had raised many kittens in her time as a keeper, but she wanted a few more to call her own. Just one more before Mundnose and I retire and join the council. She liked the sound of that. This time next year, Mun knows and I can relax at the North Base and let the others take care of us. Today they were cleaning out the storage of the South Base. Field Colony's South Base had a very convenient tunnel that was big enough and wide enough to fit the whole colony in when the weather got stormy. Last night a surprise storm had awoken them in the middle of the night and everyone rushed into the tunnel, which meant that the next day things had to be cleaned up. Hell oh, spirits! I already thought this place could use some work, but everyone dragged all the rain from out there in here, complained Jagged Stripe, pointing at the soggy pile of grasses and moss. He sighed. <sighs> I was hoping we'd get some things moved over the north base today. Metal Leap could hear a pout from Jagged Stripe without even turning around to look at him. She worked on reorganizing the extra vine they gathered for weaving grass walls. This should only take us until morning if we work hard. Amber Eyes said. Jagged Stripe sighed again. Could he use some help? A voice from the tunnel entrance called. Metal Leap turned to see Clay and Thrush walking into the tunnel. Clay was beaming, like always. 
My little ray of sunshine, Metal Deep thought. Thrush seemed less happy. Metal Deep wondered if Clay had begged Thrush to come along. Well, look who it is, Metal Deep purred. She gave both of her kittens a lick on the head. You're not wandering off from the mentors, are you? Nah, Clay responded. I asked Dad if we could come. He thought it was a good idea. He was going to show us the North Base's hunting grounds, Thrush complained. Then she gave Clay a nudge. But this idiot had to open his big mouth. We'll see it eventually, Thrush, he pushed her back. Besides, I thought you were scared of getting close to the Shadow Forest. Am not, she scoffed. She put a paw on his head and messed up the fur there while smearing mud on his face. Whatever, Mama's boy. Clay shook it off and laughed. He turned his attention back to the keepers. So, what do you need? Metal Leap purred. With Clay and Thrush's help, things should get done much faster. Metal Leap couldn't ask for two better kittens. As you can see, keepers in different colonies focus more heavily on different tasks. Field Colony depends on keepers to weave grass walls to make sure the tunnels are structurally safe. This is a skill that's unique to the culture of Field Colony, but overall, keepers from every colony would say that most of their jobs overlap, including some of the less than pleasant aspects of it. For many keepers, their driving value is the community of their colony. And this includes emotional support where they can offer it. In Marsh Colony, there's not many dens that need upkeep or tools to craft from the bog, but many dangers to warn kittens about, and many cats who need a shoulder to cry on. Mothers depend on keepers to help them get ready to have kittens, and sometimes keepers shoulder a lot of blame when things go wrong. Shrewbelly purred with satisfaction as he wrapped up his story about Captain Hawkshell saving a kitten from the hawk that earned her her name and the reputation as Soaring Protector. Stark, Red, and Boulder nestled into their soft bedding. Red was barely old enough to understand the story as it was, so he had nodded off early. Stark had fallen asleep about halfway through the tale, it was one of her favorite stories, and Shrewbelly was sure that she had asked for it a dozen times by now. But Boulder managed to make it through to the end of the tale this time. The little fluffy kitten usually got bored after the exciting hawk fight in the middle, but he seemed determined to stay awake through it this time, mostly because Stark had teased him for not knowing the end. But as soon as Shrewbelly finished, Boulder's eyes dropped close. The last of his energy had been spent. He's certainly a determined little fellow, Shrewbelly whispered to Boulder's mother, Mud Trail. He got a snore in response. It seems that she had fallen asleep to his story as well. He couldn't blame her. The midday sun was leaking into the den and made it the perfect weather to snooze in. Mud Trail shifted and wrapped her tail gently over the kittens. Even though Mudtrail wasn't Red or Stark's mother, she loved all the kittens just as much as Shrewbelly did. His heart did a funny leap when he thought about Mudtrail's dedication to the kittens. Most cats in Marsh Colony were happy leaving most of the kitten raising to Shrewbelly, which, as much as he loved them, had been a monumental task as Marsh Colony's only keeper in quite some time. Stark would be leaving his care soon. She had learned to identify all the marsh dangers quickly and was a very astute hunter. She had practiced her night stalking skills to be a real asset of hers. Even with Shrewbelly's dark coat, Stark always managed to find him quickly. He would miss her, but she promised to visit him often and Shrewbelly believed that she would. Boulder was a little slower to learn, but once Shrewbelly caught his interest, Boulder was single-minded in achieving his goals. That kind of drive could be dangerous in the marshlands, but Shrewbelly prayed to the spirits that the kitten would learn how to temper it. I just wish I had another cat to help me. <sighs> Shrewbelly sighed. In the past few years, a few cats had shown interest in taking up the keeper path, but none stuck with it. As much as he knew his colony needed him, Shrewbelly also knew that many Marsh Colony cats just weren't interested in the job. 
staying in camp most of the day, teaching kittens the history of their colony, doing basic drills with the kittens to prepare them for field training. Any cats interested in training kittens tended to become mentors instead. A part of Shrewbelly knew why. In Marsh Colony, kittens were in the most danger, and their history was littered with terrible stories of kittens getting lost, taken by predators, or drowning in the marsh. The spirits to come shine on Marsh Colony last, so the spirits beyond keep us company instead. It was a dark truth about Marsh Colony's history that turned many cats away from becoming a keeper. Even Truebelly's story for them today was of a kitten, just like them, nearly getting carried off and eaten. And who was there to save them? Not a heroic keeper. When everything goes right, that's just a keeper doing their job. When things go wrong... Hey, Shrewbelly? A small voice pulled Shrewbelly from his thoughts. He didn't expect anyone else to be awake at this time. Typically, the whole colony was asleep until the dusk patrols began in the evening. Shrewbelly quietly pulled himself away from the sleeping cats and walked outside the nursery to see Frost Shadow standing there. The white Molly looked relieved to see him. I hope I didn't wake you. She started. Shrewbelly shook his head. No, I just put the kittens to sleep. Shrewbelly winced as he saw Frost Shadow look longingly into the nursery. He could guess why she was here. I know I should be getting rest, but... Frost Shadow's voice trailed off, and Shrewbelly's heart ached for her. Frost Shadow had recently been through a miscarriage of kittens. The young Molly had been so excited to become a mother, and had even talked with Shrewbelly about becoming a keeper once her kittens were born. But after the ordeal, she had spent a long time recovering in the herbalist den with Small Pebble. Shrewbelly had done everything he could to try and help Frost Shadow before and after with her kittens, but they hadn't talked about her training to become a keeper since. Frost Shadow tore her gaze away from the nursery and took a deep breath. Mind walking with me for a bit? She asked hopefully. Of course. Shrewbelly bumped his head to hers softly. She would always have his support even though he felt pretty sure he knew where this was going. They walked in silence. It had been a while since Shrewbelly had left the base. The humidity of the marsh midday sun wasn't pleasant, but he continued forward, patiently waiting for Frost Shadow to find the right place to talk. She eventually sat on a log next to the water. Reeds and lily pads peppered the water's surface, but there was just enough space for them to look out into the still water. Frost Shadow took a deep breath and began. <sighs> I want to thank you for everything, Shrewbelly. The colony doesn't thank you enough for everything you do. Shrewbelly wasn't expecting that. He thought Frost Shadow might hate him for not being able to save her kittens. He stammered. Well, I... Uh, thank you, Frost Shadow. I only wish I could have done more. A tear came to Frost Shadow's eye, and she let out a small laugh that quickly turned into a sniffle and frown as she stared back out into the water. I'm sorry about your kittens, he finally added. Frost Shadow nodded. Me too, she said softly. I've been thinking about where I go from here, she continued. About what path I want to take. I always wanted to be a mother, but... Shrewbelly waited on bated breath. She would say that she doesn't want to become a keeper, not if it meant dealing with hardships like this all the time, or that she would instead start training to become a mentor. I've decided that the colony needs more cats like you. I still want to train to become a keeper. Shrewbelly's jaw dropped. Frost Shadow turned to face him and gave him a determined, if pained, smile. He could still see that passion, that fire in her eyes that she had before. He smiled back at her and knew this was truly what she wanted. I just need a bit more time, she finished. But I still want to do this. I want to be there and help cats the way that you helped me. Shrewbelly purred. 
he would wait however long Frost Shadow needed, knowing that he still had her friendship and support and still wanted to be a keeper made his heart sore. Of course, take all the time you need, Frost Shadow. You're going to make a wonderful keeper. Thank you, Shrewbelly. I'll let you know when I'm ready. Keepers have a wide variety of talents and abilities and are extremely important to the legacy of their colony and the Lake Alliance as a whole. By passing down their skills and knowledge, keepers ensure that the spirits beyond are honored and recognized, and that the colony is always ready for the spirits to come. All of the stories I told you today take place before the beginning of Cloud and Moon. I plan to do similar videos like this for the other career paths and other roles the colonies have, like the Council of Elders. The path of Keeper is really something we felt was important for the colonies and their way of life. It's a job that requires a bunch of skill sets separate from ranging and hunting, and it's such an important role that those skills should be passed on from generation to generation, rather than chance the possibility of losing them. I hope you enjoyed these stories. If you did, be sure to leave a like on the video, consider supporting my Patreon, because YouTube is garbage to creators, you know the drill. Keep an eye on the StarCat Studio channel for updates on Clouded Moon. You can also support us. You can also support Clouded Moon itself over at StarCat Studio on Patreon. And of course, I hope everyone is having a good week. Stay inspired.